Aloha and welcome to our video on regional wind systems. In this video, we'll identify the cause of local winds, we'll describe the general movement of weather in the United States, we'll compare and contrast weather patterns characteristic of El Nino and La Nina events, and we'll describe how global winds and pressure systems affect precipitation. Okay, so let's take a look at our first local wind pattern. Remember one thing about winds that's kind of interesting is we name them from the direction from which they blow. So when we have a land breeze, what we're talking about is wind that is coming from the land out to the ocean. So that's why we call it land breeze, because it's coming from the land. Okay. Now, conversely, if we have a sea breeze, we're going to have what? The wind will blow from the sea into the land, so it's called a sea breeze. Remember, we name winds from where they come from. So now let's take a look at how this works. So we'll start with a sea breeze. In a sea breeze, what's going to happen is we will have heating of land, which is going to get hotter faster. So as the heat land heats up, it's going to warm the air above it, and we're going to get this warm air rising. And as that warm air rises, it's going to create a little bit of a vacuum effect here, which is going to pull air into that vacuum to fill that space where we're rising that air. Now, as the air rises, it's going to get up so high, and then it'll start to spread out. And as it spreads out, it'll cool. And as it cools and becomes more dense, it'll fall back down to where the ocean is, where it's cooler. And then it'll hit there and spread. And because we have this circulation starting, we end up with this cycle going here as well. So we'll see this cycle that's going to repeat this way. Okay, So we'll have air heated over the land, causing it to rise, hitting into the atmosphere, cooling, plummeting down over the ocean. And then where surface breeze, the part that we're worried about, is this one right here and this is how we get a sea breeze okay so this will happen generally in the daytime um, normally it's going to peak in the afternoons okay is where we'll have a stronger sea breeze blowing in now the opposite happens at night at nighttime the air water temperature is going to be about the same so air is going to feel a little warmer above the water so it's going to be warm there and that's where we're going to see our rising Okay, it's going to spread out that way. It'll cool off. Now, because the land is cooler, it'll cool the air above it, which will then allow this air to blow down. And as it comes down and spreads out there, it's going to fill this gap here. and We're going to get this air blowing from the land to the ocean and our land breeze going on. So here we'll see another cycle, but this time our cycle is going the opposite direction. Okay, and that's what creates a land breeze as opposed to a sea breeze. Okay, so we can see the same type of a local wind pattern here with mountains and valleys. We have a valley breeze, which means the wind is going to blow from the valley upwards up the mountain, or we can have a mountain breeze where it will blow down the mountain from the mountain to the valleys there. And we can see the same type of thing happening. In the daytime, what's going to happen, we're going to have this warming this area down here in the valley it's going to warm the, as the air rises it's going to rise upwards along the mountains to clean out the valley way there we're basically heating up the air it's going to spread out a little bit and as it's spread out it's going to cause that air to rise out of the valley as nighttime comes in it's going to cause that air to cool and as it cools it's going to pull that air back in so that's how we make a valley breeze and our mountain breezes now, as we're talking about winds, we can talk about winds having two different properties that we worry about. One of them is the direction, okay? And we will measure the direction by using a little fin system here that you can see. But the wind direction is important, and remember, we name a wind by where it comes from. So if we have a westerly wind, that means it's blowing from the west to the east, okay? So remember that wind direction tells us where it's blowing from. We can also measure the wind speed, how fast is the wind moving. So when we report winds, we like to give it by direction and by speed. And that gives us a clear picture of what the winds are. Okay, now you'll hear about El Nino and La Nina. Um, El Nino is really an interesting event. It's one that we really appreciate here in the southwest because that's when we expect a lot of precipitation in the wintertime. Um, the normal condition is shown up above, and that's kind of what a La Nina event would be as well. And here, what we want to talk about is we want to talk about how we're having a warm water, low pressure system over here in Southeast Asia. And that's going to cause our cooler water that's here with the strong Peruvian current, 
we're going to get strong equatorial currents and strong winds blowing this way. So when we form our storms here, and because there's such a big difference, we're going to get a lot of hurricanes that are going to form this way, and they're going to move in this direction. So the moisture that we're forming these storms with is going to move out this way. During El Nino, what happens is we build up so much warm water that it flows back. So as it flows back, it causes that countercurrent, which means we stay warm here, which means now what's happening is we don't get a lot of this wind and currents moving everything out. So the moisture and the storms that are forming here, instead of them going this way, they generally tend to go up this way and we tend to get a lot more moisture. Okay, so when we have our normal conditions here, we generally have a colder winter. If we have uh, these environments, it's going to be a slightly warmer winter, but we'll get a lot more precipitation. And that's going to be kind of good for the southwest where we've been having a drought. Okay, really quickly, let's talk about global precipitation real quick. What we notice is we're going to have our areas here where we have more warm, moist air, which is going to normally travel this way. So if we're taking this moist air coming this way, it's going to collide with this air coming in this way. And that's why we see a lot more moisture in these regions than we do over here and over in the desert regions over here. So by knowing how the winds move globally, we can predict a little bit about precipitation. But for the most part, we look for immediate precipitation in the form of weather and storms. Okay, so that's it for our video. As always, good luck on your quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.